Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. The meeting will be starting shortly. While we wait, let's learn more about Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at ExeterNH.TV, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, ExeterNH.TV, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.
started. All right, welcome to our May Conservation Commission meeting. Um, I'm Andrew Kaw, the chair of the Conservation Commission. Why don't we just, we'll introduce ourselves starting with Nick. I'm Nick Campion. Kyle Welch. Dave Short. Don Clement. Valerie Fanger. Kristen Murphy, uh, Conservation Sustainability Planner. Nancy Belanges, Law Florida Rep. You just move your microphone. And I'll move my microphone. Anyone who. <laughs> All right. And so, yeah, I'd like to welcome Valerie. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to have, have you here. Excited um, to be here. It feels good to have some positive momentum in our membership after we've lost a few people recently. So that's great. Um, there's a lot of, lot of work we do and we're excited to get you up to speed and contribute however you see fit. It's, it's, there's a lot of opportunities in our town to, to help and we um, yeah, look forward to working with you. And anyone else who wants to join who may be listening out there, uh, do we have Bill online? I can't actually see, hopefully Bill was able to log in. Remotely, I don't. I'm not the controlling this. Let's assume. <laughs> so we're gonna assume Bill's here. Um, I don't see any public members here to comment. So why don't we move into our first action item? Um, it is a draft conservation deed for a proposed conservation area with the Carlisle subdivision off Watson Road. And we have um, Jones and Beach here to present. Good evening, my name is Barry Geyer. I'm with Jones and Beach Engineers here for the applicant. Um, this is for the Watson Road subdivision uh, for Mr. Carlisle. It's, uh, the project is located at 19 Watson Road. It's map 33, lot 26. The property consists of 98 acres in the R1 zone. Uh, the pro project is a 12 lot open space residential subdivision. The project will place um, 76 acres of the property into conservation. The intent is to deed the open space to the town, which is why we're here. Um, tonight, requesting the approval of the conservation easement deed to the town. Um, I also brought um, a section of the plans that you received as well, and we can review some of the conditions if, you, if the board would like that the board had requested be uh, conditions of approval. So with that, I'll take any questions or we can go through whatever you guys would like. Sure, just a, a little background for everybody. I, I'm not sure if everybody was here. This, the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board went on a joint site walk, I remember, with you. Um, and then we had one or two meetings about this project. I, it may have just been. I think two. Two. Um, and that was in 2021? Yeah, it was a while back. 2020? I don't know, it was a while ago, feeling now but it must have been during COVID. I think part of it was, and I think we had an, I think we had an in-person um, meeting as well. Yeah, there was one where we had one in person? Where people were here, yeah, somebody was here. Or was it, so was it even pre, it was a while ago. I, yeah. Okay, so you don't, you're not, we don't know when exactly it was, but was, was anyone besides Valerie not here? I, was, I don't think I was you here. You weren't here, yeah, that would make sense. Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> Don, you might not. Yeah, I was camera. You might have been on the on one of the other boards that time. Is it, there's a, maybe not. Well, again, sorry. Okay. I'm familiar with the project. Okay, excellent. Um, so we reviewed the wetland. Did we? And we we issued some sort of wetland conditional use permit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you recommended yeah. approval of the conditional use permit um, subject to th three conditions, and I, it sounds like, Barry, that's what, what you were referring to. It was in their packet. Um, the one, two, oh, five conditions, actually. Um, and so maybe it would be helpful to step through yeah. those. 
Absolutely. Um, so there were five conditions, and I'm going to take this off so we can make it move around too. Um, the first one was the inclusion of standard addressing identification or reporting information for the blanding turtles and any other relevant species um, during uh, species during construction related activities. So on the cover sheet, you can see that we have the um, our standard now standard uh, fishing game notes that uh, tell you what to do if you do notify or find any of those species. And on sheet D2, have the flyers depicting the, each of the species that are of concern on the property. Um, second condition was that the homeowners association documents to include the requirement for a vernal pool education workshop that in, includes information on the Blanding's turtle to be held a minimum of once every four years, as well as a copy of the fishing game vernal pool habitat stewardship, stewardship brochure to be attached to that HOA. And uh, this requirement has been added to the, to the HOA documents that you have. It's article nine um, on page 14. And the vernal pool habitat stewardship series document is attached to that HOA as well. Um, number three is a requirement that the proposed open space pre be preserved in perpetuity through either the South S Land Trust or the Exeter Conservation Commission. And should the town hold interest in the land, the deed would be reviewed by the Conservation Commission, which is why we're here tonight. You have the deed. It has been reviewed by the town as well, and, and the town is, or Christine has, or Kristen has worked with the, um, the attorneys for the applicant. Number four is at the installation of conservation boundary disc along the boundary of house lots. So if you look on sheet, it's actually the C3s and the C2s. We show boundary discs that indicate conservation easement boundaries along all the property lines. Um, we also, as part of the fish and game comments, had to add protected habitat placards along all the wetland buffer lines. Yeah, and then just to explain that for those who weren't part of this review, there, there's a number of vernal pools at this particular site that are adjacent to the property boundaries. So there's concern about sort of spillover from from the development to the adjacent vernal pool. And there, there's quite a number and um, the quality of them are quite excellent. So it was there was some concern about protecting that, that valuable resource. Yeah, to give a quick overview of the property, um, this is the uh, 98 acres. Um, you can see we have 12 lots spaced on a approximately 900 foot cul-de-sac. Um, and all the area all around it is what we're putting into conservation, which is 76 acres. Um, the town owns the property to the east, so we thought that would be a good connection between the two properties. And there are wetlands and um, vernal pools as well sprinkled throughout the property. We actually modified some of the lots to ensure that the wetlands, vernal pools weren't on a property but were in the open space. And so the property of the east is part of the greater Oakland's um, town forest. Yes. But there's a large wetland that on that Board, that that property boundary is a large wetland. So, in terms of sort of connecting into the existing town forest, I think there's a beaver dam. This property doesn't oh, really beaver. provide a, a connection, a direct connection Not to a Oakland in a, in, in a way, in, for at least trail wise. It, it would need a bridge. But it, but. Um, Approval of this by New Hampshire Fish and Game identified one specific um, trail, and that that's basically the old Woods Road that was there, and then afforded for a connection to the 20-foot 
wide um, pedestrian right of way within the development. So um, they didn't propose and Fish and Game did not review connecting that trail to our network. And the last condition was that the final plans shall show an increase to the slopes along the proposed roadway to reduce the impact to the wetland buffers. So um, along this area at the entrance, uh, we had it shown at three to one in our um, original design and it impacted some of the wetland <coughs> buffers. So we reduced that to a two to one side slope and we're able to prevent the impact of the wetland buffer. And those were all the conditions. Okay, and that all went into the part of the conditional use permit letter that we sent. So now, tonight, really, the, the thing we're looking at is the town is looking to become um, what this is called fee owned. So we would become the owner of this property. Um, and this is the document that would provide the town the ownership over this property and all of the conditions associated with it. So we have to put in our long-term planning hats when we review these in terms of um, what's best for the property and the town and the, what makes sense for this particular development. And, and in terms of the role of the Conservation Commission, the, Con the Conservation Commission doesn't own property, the town does, so the select board, before they sign a lease, um, they would want legal counsel to review it, and they would want to hear a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. And if you're supportive of acquiring it, that, that you know bears weight to their decision. Right, so we're reviewing this and making some sort of motion as, in terms of a recommendation to the select board. Um, on this document, it'll go to legal review before it gets to the select board, right? They may have some comments. It's been reviewed by the development's lawyers, but not the town's Correct. lawyers. Um, and then the select board will, will review it, and they can approve it or kick it back. I don't know, has the select board, Nancy, I don't know if you need to want to comment on your perspective on this. We haven't seen it. We haven't had it put in front of us. Okay. And just in general, um, I guess on the process. Yeah, you look to us for a recommendation. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll five vote on it. So. Andrew, can you hear me? Bill, oh, yes. Hey, hey, Bill. Good evening, Bill. Yeah, I think it, the... The trouble was on our side at one point. I think that we got you connected now. Uh, question about the two right ways that go, especially the one that's going directly to our uh, uh, local town force. Is there going to be parking allowed on the uh, roads in the uh, development? Uh, how, you know, the person wants to use that right way. Uh, can, it, can we have three or four cars parked on that salt cul-de-sac? Well, th that certainly wasn't a part of the proposal to designate an area for trail parking. Um, so I would say no, Bill. There wouldn't be parking available there. Um, you know, it's a, it's a road, though. <laughs> for the people in the development? I missed the beginning of what you said. Is the right of way just for people in development? No. No. It's a public road, right? It, it Will it be a public be a road? public right of way, yep. It's a public road, Bill. way to the, the trail. Right. It's down to yeah. the road. There. If I want to use that entrance, and I can't park there, <laughs> Well, you can park on a public road. So, if it's a public road, one can park on there unless it's posted by the select board for no parking or parking limitations. But any pro any public road, uh, unless there are specific parking restrictions, can be utilized by the public for parking. That's, that's what I assumed. But somebody just said there can't be any cars there. Uh, I'm wondering how people are going to access this property. Is it only through the... Uh, 
Uh, over time, it, I think over time it would be. I guess it's a slippery slope thing. We have the Watson Road parking issue, and this is not, not far from there. And if there was a trail cut through that somebody established, it seems like once it, I don't know, I could see that becoming a, a thing where you cut through here somehow. Um, well, I don't, think, I don't think we necessarily need to have all conservation areas have a recreational component to them. It would be nice to have some recreational areas, yeah. or I mean, conservation areas Natural, that, natural resources. that really were just, yeah. yes. Oh yeah, I agree. Because um, we, we impact some of our other lands pretty heavily. Um, so I think this is an ideal spot to keep it quiet. Uh, on a, on a, one more question on the restrictions. Uh, this was to be, if the select board were to accept it, this would be owned by the town. Correct. Uh, a year or so ago, or two years ago, sometime or another, there was a proposal before the uh, New, Hampshire, or New Hampshire legislature about public land owned by the town had to be open to hunting. Mm. Does that, did that law get passed? Does no. it exist? It does not. No. Okay. So we don't have to worry about it for this possible. Right now, right at, at this so, point, at this point for now. Could we then add into the conservation easement? I didn't see it. Maybe I, maybe I missed it. Uh, no hunting. Yeah, I was just looking for that. I think it's silent on hunting. I don't remember. I don't remember no. seeing anything about I didn't, yeah. hunting. I didn't either. see anything about hunting. So it would allow hunting unless specifically excluded. My understanding. Well, right. if you don't exclude it specifically, you it becomes difficult to sit enforce it and say you can't hunt in there. So where where was that said? You can at least now refer back to the document that he's written. Not to say I'm against hunting, but I mean again I'm trying to protect the natural resources and reduce the impact. Uh, well if we're going to if we're not gonna allow hunting there, uh, then we should have it in the uh, Terms of the easement, I believe. Well, and also in proximity to those houses. Well, well, yeah. Well, that's, that's the state law that says you can't shoot within, within a certain number of feet. Feet. Yeah. feet. But even so, oh yeah, it yeah. just it better. It'd be there are better. some areas that aren't you know aren't conducive to the to hunting. We, we've done that in the uh, extra the uh, AZ, instance with town forest. Right. We prohibit hunting for the biggest reason is that we have so much activity in there, uh, human activity. Okay, so I mean, if that's not, and I don't know if it, I might have missed it in the conservation easement. I don't know. I didn't see it. But if it's not there, can we have that? I'm recommending that we have it added. Just a suggestion on my part. We're not. The applicant isn't opposed to that suggestion at all. Um, one of the things we that has taken this project so long is working with fish and game. So um, we, any change to this, we have to go back to Fish and Game and make sure that they're yeah. okay with it, just FYI. So um, that's, that's sure. been our largest setback because they're not quite up to speed with the level of <clears throat> reviews they've had to do recently. Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, this section L is sort of the, the most significant in terms of laying out what can be done here. It says, except as set forth in section K above, the property shall not be posted against and the grantee shall keep access to and use of the property open to the general public for non-motorized, non-wheeled, pedestrian, non-commercial, outdoor recreation, and outdoor educational purposes such as, but not limited to, hiking, wildlife observation, and cross-country skiing, but not for camping. Yes, I know. So that doesn't consider... Well, sure, it doesn't uh, include or preclude on the hunting. It does not. It is, well, it does, it does it say does. something about no, no usage that is contrary to the intent of the preservation. I wonder if that would... Um, yeah, I... Uh, I wonder if that's your interpretation. <laughs> yeah. I, I would suggest, again, where it says, 
but not for camping, comma, hunting, or hunting in Section L. That, but that's just my recommendation, and I know you'd have to go back to fish and game. Understood. Allow hunting in the Oaklands? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. So if this is connecting to that. Right. So they I could know, go that's on the I'm... other side of the. Mm -hmm. So the challenge with that, if, if hunting was prohibited on this property outright, um, we would need to maintain the signage, the boundary signage no hunting signage on Correct. that entire boundary, which would be pretty challenging through, uh, the, through the Welland. If you have it written in the conservation easement, you might not be required to post it under the formal state posting rules. Because we certainly don't in the Henderson Swayze Town Forest. We have some signs Right. But not, we post as not, best not, as we can. It's supposed right. to be posted every... 50 feet. 50 feet. Is it 50 feet? Yeah, I know it's a very... So... Mm -hmm. oh. Again, if the intent is not to... Is to preserve it, to reduce the impact, and not have hunting... Prefer not to have hunting in this... Is it 70 acres, 76 acres? 76. Open, uh, open space uh, preservation area <coughs> should be noted rather than assumed or implied. I don't have a strong opinion on this one. No. I could go either, either way. Especially with the Oaklands abutting it, allowing hunting. Um. So right, even, even if the deed remains silent, right now when people call and ask where they can hunt, I refer them, I don't check every deed, I refer them to our town ordinance which specifies what properties you can hunt on, right? And so, so it's Little River, Oaklands, et cetera, uh, Smith Page, Rains. And so, so you would still have that level of control, but Don's right. Should, should this intent not be clear up front, you know, a version of this board decades from now won't know that your intent was to prevent hunting out there, right? So it really just depends on how strongly you feel about that position. I don't. Yeah, I guess I'm not feeling. We don't. I mean, do we? We don't have any strong hunters on this commission at the moment. We have had some in the past. Um, oh, I'm not anti-hunting. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, 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 I've. I mean, I've advocated for opening some of the land for uh, for hunting. Uh, Swayze, uh, Swayze. Excuse me, Rains Farm. For example, uh, we, we we also thought that we never should hunt on there, and I said, well, I think we should, because it's you know it's it's large enough, and it's it's an area that was conducive to hunting, especially for upland upland game. Um, again, it's because of the we're talking about this the natural <coughs> resource of this area that we're trying to protect, i.e., basically the vernal pools, and when you do that, you're trying to reduce the impact of impacting through them. Uh, if you're going to exclude wheeled bicycle, wheeled vehicles to reduce the impact, you know, hunting's going to have an impact too. You know, I'm just trying to, re I'm just trying to reduce the impact. That's all. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's a, it's a board, I, it's a commission decision what, yeah. on this recommendation. That's you know, I I'm, just, I'm just making it. I guess in terms of. The vernal pool habitat, that's a critical spring period right now. You know, I, we have one near our house and I went and saw the tadpoles. They're, they've hatched out of their the wood, wood frog eggs. It's pretty cool to watch them. So it's a, I, I, so I could, I think someone could make an argument that hunting typically is a, a fall um, activity outside of the vernal pool season, you're not typically hunting any species that would be connected with the vernal pool, and those <laughs> two activities could coexist. Um, well, if we were, we were going to um, 
make this recommendation, we'd have to have a motion and vote on it anyways, right? Correct. Right. So let's have a motion and vote on it. Move to include no hunting as one of the conditions in the uh, easement language in Section L. That's my motion. Does anyone want a second? Or do we want to discuss the... Yeah, you need a second for a second, discussion. and then we discuss. We follow, we try to follow Robert's rules as best we can, and some, sometimes I'm not always the best. I'll second it for the conversation. Again, I've made, I've made, you know, my, okay. I've given you my reasoning. Yeah. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm not going to keep going on and on. Right. So I guess my perspective would be I'm comfortable keeping consistent with the rest of the Oakland's policy. And um, I think there are definitely people that would make the case that hunting can actually be, you know, an integral part of preserving a, a habitat um, if it's if it's managed and done right. So, you know, I, I'm not a hunter, but I, I think there are definitely people that would make that case. And especially if it's going to make this whole thing be drawn out more for the applicant, I don't see it as such a big deal. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with the points Kyle made and just the the challenge in defining the property and enforcing the property boundary between Oakland's, I think is a bit cumbersome, so. I agree, I agree with Nick agreeing with Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> right, we want to look forward. I do see, is this, a, and it make our lives more administratively um, difficult. We have a lot of property, a lot of properties to monitor. If this is a, yet another thing that we have to do every year. Right. Is that something that's worth taking that, that responsibility on to, in, to post? Whether or not we, I guess we don't need to, or no, there's some... I'm not clear on how much right. ongoing work <coughs> this would be for the town, Kristen, immediately. <laughs> um, so, so. All right. Okay. So, should we vote? Yes. Move okay. the question. What's that? Move the question. We're going to move the. Move the question means bring it to a vote. We're going to bring it to a vote. All those in favor. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. 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 Okay, the nays. Um, and we have, I guess, one abstention. Well, do I? I didn't know whether I, I guess you're not. Or not. You're <laughs> not. I do. You're not. not you're an alternate, so you're not voting. Well, well tonight Your you're option, in. yeah, it's, it's, it's up to you. If you feel comfortable to vote, you can, but it's not required. Yeah, yeah, yeah up to seven I'll people can vote. on the first. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we usually are. This is abnormal. But anyways, the um, I guess so the vote does for that motion does not pass. So just for the minutes, so what that was what? Four, no? Yes. Okay. No. The okay. Four, one, one, I think. Four, one, one. All right. Thank you. It was one of our rare split votes. It's, it's the first one I've seen, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um... Okay, so that leaves us with the deed as is. Do we want to have any other discussion on other language modifications to the deed? Um, the other major thing that we have not talked about yet that we need to be aware of that I'll move to, uh, but there's other things, we can certainly discuss them, is the drainage easement. So the property developer, in this case, is maintaining a drainage easement, which is a section of the property that will be owned by the town of Exeter, but used as a stormwater management zone for the road runoff. So the road, um, stormwater will be directed to the bottom of the property. There's a big hill in the middle that the road goes up through. Um, the, the, the Watson Road is down at the bottom of the property. And Barry, you can describe this more. Yeah, we collect all the stormwater and enclosed drainage system and bring it to the, uh, the uh, Watson Road um, 
uh, intersection, and we treat it in a, a, a four bay and then an infiltration uh, pond. Oh, actually a wet pond with an infiltration component after it. But um, a portion of it will remain or is shown in the open space. A portion of it is on the lot. Um, because our lots can't start, we have to continue or maintain a 100 foot external buffer because of it's an open space project. But the maintenance of the project stays with the homeowners association because the town doesn't want to take over maintenance of stormwater features. So um, a portion of it will be in lot one and a portion of it will be in the open space. So can you confirm the town is going to take over the up the maintenance in, of the road. So the road, it'll be a public road. Correct, it's a public road with public maintenance. The stormwater basin, they don't want to take over. Stormwater, so that, because you provided the HOA bylaws in here too. And so the HOA is really for the operation of the stormwater management. Basically that's it. <coughs> so the town does not want to maintain the, that stormwater area? Correct. So that it would be fall. Storm, fall. Stormwater treatment has gotten more intense yep. requirements over the years, and these basins are getting more and more mm -hmm. complicated. Um, and the town just—I mean, it's a, it's a, a financial burden to maintain them. So they're putting it back onto the homeowners association to maintain. It. And these these houses, just for if you didn't see them, the the map, they will all be on their own wells and leach field septic systems. So they're all on private water and private. Yeah, water. quite well. Yeah, the question I have is that, and I'm speaking something to the planning board, I think, or to the town planner, is how does the town ensure that the homeowners association or whoever the grantor is maintains that stormwater structure? Is there language in there? Usually there is when we do a, a sign the planning the planning board planning board document. Yeah, there's an annual reporting requirement. Okay, so there is a mechanism to ensure that uh, that is maintained as it should be, yep. even though the town is not doing it. Okay, thank you. I know usually they put Strapples puts that in, but I wasn't sure. Okay, then it's it's not an unusual agreement. I think we've it's in a couple of other areas. Our developments, a similar uh, requirements. So I'm good with it. There's no other HOA land, as it were, correct? It's all just either private subdivision correct. or this parcel. That is correct. So really, the, the <coughs> HOA is only really being formed to maintain the stormwater system. Uh -huh. And to learn about rental pools every year. <laughs> Before <I'm> corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll become a rental pool. And that, that's a little different than some of our other subdivisions where we've had these fee-owned areas. There's typically been a common space that's controlled that's by true. the HOA. Uh, that was one of the options. Um, as you see, Fishing Game is trying to get the homeowners association. We had intended at some point for the HOA to hold the open space. Fishing Game and the town decided that they would prefer that the HOA didn't hold the open space because it's um, it's less likely to be maintained or kept as open space. So this way, there is a mechanism where the town and Fishing Game can ensure that the uh, person's backyard doesn't continually expand over time and that open space continues to be open okay um, yeah I don't see any other I guess option or obvious option to this so I'm I guess I'm a, I think I'm okay with the drain adjustment but are there other concerns that's Okay, any other comments? I did provide a draft motion if if you're ready. In the See if I can get a motion that people will agree to. <laughs> Move that uh, the Conservation Commission state that they have, the Conservation Commission has reviewed the deed with conservation restrictions and subject to legal counsel review, recommend that the select board accept 
the deed for presentation as, as presented. presented. Sorry. My I, I will eyes second moved. that motion. I was going to enthusiastically <laughs> second it. <laughs> wow. Well, I got to have okay. it. Alone. We'll, we'll do a, a vote unless there's any discussion. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. We have I one did of, vote. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay, so we have a six, nice. six to zero <laughs> vote. Thank you. Thank you all very Barry. much. Thank you. Thanks. We'll, do, we'll tap that. Thank you, Barry, for coming in tonight. Um, so we'll send a memo to, I'll work with draft, Kristen to draft a memo to the select board on that. Sounds good. I think it would be helpful for the commission to identify how they, do they want to, do you want to allow hunting or not, so that we know what we're doing. Am, am I posting it? You know, the, the deed is silent on it, so it's up to you to decide, really. And at some point, we need to know the answer to that. Are we just going to allow it or, or not? I think, I mean, the, the was to allow it at this point. Okay. I think if we don't specifically disallow it, then we're allowing it. But I should update the I should update the town ordinance to include this property. If that's the case. And when it comes to the select board, when I do my report Monday night, I will be talking to the other members about the <coughs> conversation. So, because they can weigh in on on that particular. So. Yeah. You're going to tell them about the dissension on the Conservation Commission? I tell, I'm wow. trying to include everything. <laughs> wow. It's no dissension anyway. It's a conversation. Okay. It's important well, thing. That's why we do our report. So. Uh, I, I, think, I think the ordinance that you're referring to refers to the discharge of firearms. Yes, that's true. Not hunting per se. I believe. It's true. So there is other hunting without firearms. Ooh, that's uh, that's right. a whole we could be here all night. can of worms now. Yeah. You're so right, if you're going to allow this kind of, but if, you, if you're saying the ordinance does specify which town-owned properties allow discharge of firearms. Yeah. And if, you know, it's Rains, Henderson, and Henderson, excuse me, uh, Oakland's, Oakland's Forest. Yep. Smith Page, is there another one? Smith Page, it's about a Little half, River. About five or six, anyways. Do we, are we obligated to update the ordinance or is that just? I get phone call. I mean, I get phone calls about what properties are open and I defer to the ordinance. And do we, do we specifically deny? You don't have to, you don't have to. It's an interesting conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Do we, yeah. do we specifically prohibit it on some properties? Yes. So yes. we could specifically prohibit on this? Yes. Well, let's do that. I don't know. I, I, it sounds I like we need to think about it a little oh, bit lower. Specifically okay. prohibit it I guess as we an ordinance back. rather than on the deed. But do we need no, to No, the, the ordinance is what is allowed. It doesn't prohibit. The ordinance is not to prohibit discharge of firearms. The ordinance is to allow discharge of firearms. I haven't got the ordinances right. in front of me. I don't have the number. Right, right. but Come if on. it's not <laughs> listed, you can't, do we, you can't do, hunt with a gun. Do we need to address it before or after the select board addresses it? Our recommendation. No, I don't think that would hang up this. No. Okay, so we. But can, I'm just. So we can just. While we're on the subject and it's fresh in everyone's minds, it would be helpful to know where we're leaning. The, the select board is the one that actually updates or approves any changes to the ordinance. Right, but they're not going to do that unless Correct. I provide a memo. Unless it's a recommendation. recommendation. Right. Correct. Well, they can do. They can. Of course you okay. can. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but you're not likely to unless. <laughs> Right. I, I mean, I don't know. I just do my report and give yeah. everyone something to think about and weigh in on. So. Well, it'll have to go on an agenda item, and it won't be on next week's agenda item. No, it wouldn't, but it would be in my report. Yeah, well, yeah I know. And then it would be discussed on whether we wanted to have a further conversation. We're not, we're not publicizing it that way, or we're not promoting it that way. Otherwise, it goes on the list of properties where it's promoted. Right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. How, I, I guess I was under 
that seemingly that we were allowing hunting here by what we just talked about. So I'm, if we prohibit it in another way, that's confusing. I, I, mean, I would look to keep it consistent with however the Oaklands is okay. identified does, personally. Does this have to be a distinct unit or could it just be added to the Oaklands? It's a separate parcel. What's that? It's a separate parcel. But it's a, it's a D, it's a D, it's a D, so it'll be isn't it? Anyway, Oakland. Yeah, I'll have to confirm if it's. I think it says Oakland's Town Forest, which yeah, that's another issue. But I mean, let's, that would make let's administration. Let's table this for now. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's, let's table it. There's. I can always go back to it. Yep. It's maybe something we need to think about if we have look at hunting uh, across the town. No. Um, all right, that was interesting. All right, let's let we have some other things to talk about. Uh, they should be able to go through them pretty quick. We have the pollinator pathways. We have some winners. Would you like to announce them? You should. I okay. We are going to announce. So the last m meeting we decided to raffle off four, four seed kits, but we got eight applicants. So we, we're giving away eight. We're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have not informed these people? Correct. I would really prefer not to try and read all these names. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like for you to do that, Kristen. Okay. So the applications we received were from Catherine Igna Ignagni, oh, that's Stephanie Slabon, Andrea Kohler, John Berenson, Matt Green, Natalie Rinali, Mary Teagle, and Ann Matthews. And I apologize if I mispronounced it. Congratulations, folks. Yes. Yeah. Being a participant in the pollinator. And so I did bring a sample kit. So this is the kit that they'll receive. It has planting instructions and a pretty dense seed packet. So it's a pretty nice size seed packet. So there you have it. Excellent. So I'll it's coordinate good. with getting those out. It's a good time to plant wildflowers right now. I'm trying to. Now I need rain. Last week I had too much rain. Now I'm going no, to get rain for 10 days. Right, now it's That's not. I got to water it. Ow. It's true. Um, Peace of famine. All right, now we're going to talk about the Alewife Festival, which is very exciting. And we have a bit to coordinate and go over, I think. It's this Saturday, 10 to 1, Founders Park, right next to the Great Bridge, across from... Sea Dog in the library there. Um, so I hope everyone can make it. Should be, the weather's looking pretty good. And we have Alewife running, so, so reported. So time to get out and see the Alewife. We're gonna start at 10. Um, and we have a whole schedule and it's been posted. Do you wanna talk a little bit about all the work you've put into this, Kristen? to come up with the schedule or um, do we, sure. what so, do we need to go over tonight? I mean, I, I think it would be great to talk about the commission's role, right? So just to confirm that everyone's on board. Right. So we, Trevor is speaking um, on the, uh, the health of Great Bay in the intro section. Um, and I'll confirm that since he's not here, I'll confirm that with him in person, but just kind of a, a, a sneak peek of PrEP's latest report. Um, and then for the Conservation Commission table, you and Trevor have models that you'll be sharing, the same ones as last year. Yeah, I'm gonna have the groundwater model. I wasn't sure if Trevor was gonna do the other one. Oh, okay. The, the Enviroscape. Okay. Um, I could try and get it. Okay. Um, I'll check in with Trevor on that. We may or may not, we might just do one. Okay. And then I don't know if there are other things at the table for displays that you need from me or. Um, did we have, I, I don't think we really had anything else. I mean, we could have trail maps or. Mm -hmm. Are there info on, I guess, did we have some prep stuff or what did we have last year? Last year you had a map of wildlife corridors, I believe. And I don't know. I think that might be it. Because you had two kits. Yeah, we had yeah. two kits. 
I suppose uh, the point is if if there's something that you need printed, I'm happy to do it. Okay. I just need to know. Yeah, at this point, I'm not inclined. Okay. Um, and then but the if other other people want to hang out and present info. I mean, certainly that could be done. Okay, sorry. And then the other component, Kyle, you hit, you were still good taking people down to Stirring Bridge. Yep. Do you have everything you need for that? I don't know what that would be, but life jackets. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it. I don't know. Polaroid sunglasses. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right, great. Yeah. And if other people want to come help, do you have other? We have set up. We'll, we'll get there early to set up. Yeah, that would that would uh, be helpful. I plan to get there at nine. Um, I, I'd like to get there a little bit ahead of the committees because I want to mark out where the tables are going. But you know, anytime after nine fifteen would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe what you could have at your table is the <coughs> raffle, so you'll collect the passport. Um, the yeah, we can passport that. things, and and Concom maybe could be the one to do the drawing at one. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, we can do the drawing. Great. So we'll. Do you want me to bring? I could bring something to just collect all the. I have something. You have something. Yep. Okay. Okay, we'll do the drawing, and then Sarah's going to do. She's going to be doing her printing on the canvas. She's got the fish. Looks pretty cool. It's awesome. So people can come and print on this linoleum cut that she's made and then print it onto this giant canvas. Live we'll community art. Live yeah. community art. And she started that making tote bags, but then wasn't sure about it. If she was going to sell, sell those if people wanted tote bags. <coughs> um, so there's been some, a little bit of indecision on that, but she, I don't know what. Oh, and she has stickers too. Of the, oh. She made the alewife into oh, that's stickers. Great. So pretty fun and we have the pint glasses yeah I wasn't gonna sell them I was just gonna raffle, raffle include, the, include two in the or <coughs> two or four okay. in the um, so that there could be two raffles one for the rain barrel and one for the pint glasses perfect um, keep it simple this year right right and then so we'll have representation from sustainability energy there'll be um, electric vehicle displays River Study Committee, Erla, uh, Esserlach, um, who will also help with the Healthy Lawns program, right? I think Dick, do you want oh, Dick? No? Being recruited, okay. Yep. Okay, I, I don't I know hope. how long we want to be there, but it's, and I know yep. well from yep. Erlach will be there, but we'll. Okay. Um, Dick, you will be and I'll be there as well. Uh, um, who else? The Tree Committee is going to be there. Yeah, so it'll it'll be fun. This year we have activities also happening in the children's room of the children's art room of the library, so um, kids can go in there and create their own mini seed kit. Oh, um, cool! And they have a scavenger hunt um, of all of these different pictures that they'll then take and go around to all the tables and find the pictures on each of the committee's tables. So I'll get those set up. Oh, wow. So kind of a reverse version of the passport. <laughs> so the kids get to look for stuff, too, while the parents are busy. Nice. Yeah. I'll be there at and 9 to help Kristen set up. Okay. And I'll this be, is going to get explained to everybody how it kind of works at some point, how these... Yeah. Okay. I'll probably send an email. Not tomorrow, because we have the SST thing, but... Yeah. Or you'll explain it at the event too, like yeah. grab this and yeah. Get it. Perfect. So then, um, what about do you? At one point, at the last meeting, we talked about beverages, or do we just want to stay simple? What's the any preferences there? I don't know what the beverage would be. Um. We had the food truck sale last year. Yeah, we don't. And, and we really didn't, it didn't do well. Yeah. Uh, and for anything, food or beverage. So, I mean, again, it's, it's a small event. It's late in the morning. You know, I don't think we need to have, There's the only water. beverage I can think is water bottles. But again, 
I want to We're not go along with the sustainability, <laughs> which is to do away with right. <laughs> right. <laughs> One time use plastic, so no, I'm. No, they, there's a water fountain in the library, right? So we're good. River. The river. <laughs> Jump in. Okay, great. Okay. I'm looking forward to, to it. And then there it seems like. There should be something coming out in the paper on Friday, I'm hoping. Okay. And it's been on Facebook and Exeter TV has. They advertise. I saw it's on the website. Yep, and we did it in their bi-weekly report. I did a little bit. Um, so we tried all the channels. Cool. All right. Um, up next, we have the SST cleanup tomorrow. Thanks to Kristen and Kyle. And Dave. And Dave. Yeah, it was going to be Dave. So Dave wah, can't make wah, it, wah. so it's Kyle and I, um, and um, they get to herd cats. And and Marco, the teacher. So I think we can brainstorm in the morning, or if you want to talk about it now. But um, there's one small section, Kyle, that Dave had dropped off some wood that we were going to kind of put um, put some bridging over, just simple bridging. So I don't know if you're comfortable doing that, sure. or okay. And then I'll take the rest of the students um, and do a combination of invasive plant stuff and clean up. Um, do, we, kind, do we need tools or should I bring like clippers and loppers and? Sure, yeah, loppers would be great. Um, I don't think clippers, there's not really, the trails are in great shape. Some, uh, someone has been maintaining them <laughs> excessively so it's almost too squeaky clean, but. Um, Good. Yeah, so. Yes. I, I saw something on social media the other day about somebody had taken a walk back there and came back low. The tick population is significant out there. That was this morning. Was, hmm? That was this morning. Oh, was it this morning? Yeah. And it was talk about, you know, how do we manage that and warning people. And I, I again, I, I don't know what, to, you know, just to be aware tomorrow. Well, you will yeah. be, I'm sure. But, uh, yep, but I did I'm mention kind that of, to Anne. She said she had fan, already you know, talked with her students about that. I, I will bring um, DEET if people want to spray their legs. Welcome yeah, I'm not a fan that. of chemical, chemically treating the area. Oh, no. At all, at all. So. Yeah, I hope not. There, there, on that post, one of the local treatment companies offered to treat it, I think for free, but yeah. no. No. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, I mean, there's drainage tiles all through that field, and that that goes directly out to the river. So, because it used to be a former football field, <coughs> so the old drainage tiles are still there. I wouldn't recommend that. I would. Yeah, strongly recommend against. And and we're trying to grow it as pollinator habitat, so. We'll it's just a. It's what it is today with the yeah, just ticks good, with the good tick tick. less less winter. Shorter and less, you know, severe winters, the tick population is exploding. And it's well, I'd particularly a dog running through that field. I don't know where you guys are going to be if you're on the trail. It's probably not as bad as there the, is the a, field itself. There is a bit of trash in the field that we need to pick up. Anyways, but yeah, you do a tick check at the end. Make sure you yep. spend five or ten minutes just doing that. Um, okay, well, good luck tomorrow. That'll be fun. Good, good weather. Yeah. And then there's another trail day on the 27th or June 3rd. Time TBD. I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about. Yeah, so um, Kyle had said that he's available to help and he's available both days. If others are available and interested and that'll narrow down the dates, that's fine. Or we could just pick one. Um, and it'll just be Kyle and I. I mean, I'd be ha happy to help if we can hire somebody by that, the time it happens. Yeah. That's what it really comes down to. Yeah. Um, so. So those are Saturdays. Mid-morning to mid-afternoon. I can't do those dates. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Is that an existing cross? High school uses those cross country trails. Um, I don't country? know. I, I know they have a ropes course in there. I don't. I don't know if they use it as their cross hmm. country. No, they trails. don't. They don't. No, they have their meets at um, Phillips Exeter. Oh, okay. It's a lot. A lot of swamp back there. Okay, okay, so, so if it's we'll just us, then Kyle, are you good with going with the June date? Whatever that works best for you. Okay, I prefer the June date. Okay. Oops. That's fine. Um, we have some things about rains. Do you want to talk about? Yeah. Um, so just briefly, um, repairs are ongoing. Steven's do Steve is doing a great job. Um, Public Works was out there to help with some regrading to access the sill. Um, Does Valerie, do you know about Rains Park? Oh, yeah. So up on Newfields Road, do you know Newfields Road? There's, there, there's a big red barn on the right in a field. That's a town, it's our town barn, right. as it were. And it's right on the curve. Right on, yeah, there's a curve. The word barn's on one side of the road. Word barn quite well. So it's right across from there. Um, and there's a parking lot you can park just past the word barn on the right. Okay. And then you kind of walk back down towards Exeter to the barn area. Um, and there's a bunch of work going on right now. Okay. We've worked hard to, um, for some reason, well, it's town conservation area farm. Um, and it continues to be hayed. And, um, but we're kind of on the hook to help maintain this barn because DPW doesn't have the capacity to. So there's a contractor right now that Kristen's talking about. Right, it's a historic barn. So we applied for a grant. It's on the state list, the state register of historic places, in fact, for its significance. Um, and so we hired, uh, we applied for a grant with LCHIP, the Land Community Heritage Investment Program. That was awarded. Um, and so he's out there basically doing his work, getting the windows repaired and the sills and, um, you know, the support beams, you name it. Um, and then it, the, the exterior work will be replacing or repairing the clapboards on the outside on the south and east side. Um, by the time the grant was awarded and we got the contractor in place, the cost of materials increased so we didn't have enough funds to do all four sides. So um, I am uh, <coughs> submitted a letter of intent to apply for a moose plate grant, which will be due this summer. Um, that's a 20, 20,000 grant, $20,000 grant or 25, yeah, $20,000 grant. And I'm hoping that'll get us a little bit closer, but we're we're about fifty-five thousand dollars short, so it might not get both exterior sides done. So I don't know what we'll do at that point, but just out of curiosity, where do you research your grants? Um, Google. <laughs> yeah. Um, Are you a good grant writer or grant finder? Because well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> there is a there is a site, you know that I've researched grants before, so maybe we could talk afterwards. Yeah. That is fairly easy to get on through the New Hampshire not-for-profit organization. So, Grant Station. Oh, please, so, yes. Let's definitely talk about yeah, that. So, yeah, because I'd be happy to do some research into grants. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Kristen's going to float home tonight. I will. I'll sleep well tonight. That's yeah. news so no, far. That's, so, that's fantastic. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Um, so uh, with that, that obviously means that um, we'll need some help with um, review of the grant application for Moose Plate. So we'll probably create a subcommittee as we did with LCHIP um, and, uh, and go from there. Um, in terms of the lease, so we have a current lease with the farmer. Um, and that lease was a five-year period with the potential to extend it for another five years if both parties are happy with what's happening. Um, and so I checked with the farmer. Uh, the Davises of Little Brook Farm are still interested in haying the property, which is great news. Um, and 
happy with the fluctuations in mowing to accommodate nesting birds, which I think is fantastic. So as long as the Conservation Commission is on board, um, then I'll present to the select board that both parties are still supportive of continuing and request that they um, sign the lease. Sorry, we, we, nothing needs to be signed. They just need to agree to extend it another five years. I would recommend we move forward with the lease on another five-year term with Darren Davis of Littlebrook Farm. Is that a motion? I'll motion that. Well, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. The motion passes. Okay. Um... So we've renewed the lease. Anything else on rains? No. Nope. I want to go out and see what's going on. I haven't been out there recently. It's fascinating. Are, is anyone, Exeter TV, are you just like taking yeah. pictures and like chronicling Bob it? Bob has asked for an opportunity to interview Stephen, um, which I haven't broached that with him yet. Mm -hmm. I did, I, um, and I need to. Uh, we also had um, the... Um, building trades teacher at SST is what am I not doing? So, no, we took video and oh. was, we did like drum shots. Of oh, right, but no interviews with inside the barn or anything not inside yet. the barn. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so SST, the building trades, they were wanting to come out and meet with him because there's kind mm -hmm. of a shortage of. Um, restoration um, in the building trade, restoration workers in the building trades, but I don't, I don't think, I think he's very interested in being focused on the repairs, <laughs> which I don't blame him, and that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah. So oh, maybe we could get a quick interview or something, I don't know, but still working on it. It's, it's always fun to see when I drive by, like, oh, they, they got the scaffolding up, like, yeah. you know, oh, they yeah. got the clapboards down, like, you know, it's, it's always neat to see, so. And the mowing around it got managed? So he did it once. Public Works, I think, has done it once, and it, need, it needs another one. I, I have a message from him asking, wanting to talk about poison ivy, so I'm guessing there's some additional work that we need to do there, and I don't know what that is. Yeah, there's some poison ivy. I bet there is some poison ivy. Yeah. I mean, it, we knew there were vines there, so yeah. we'll have to figure out what, what his request is. Okay. Um, yeah, send us any uh, email updates to the committee, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. Um, otherwise, we had a ton of rain, but things have dried out. Trails are in pretty good shape, seemingly. Amazing. So, Beaver Deceiver is working perfectly. Even with all this rain, that bridge is still high and dry. Fantastic. And I saw the closed... One of the closed signs, at least, a few weeks ago when I was out in Oakland. They're all still there? Still there, so. They, nobody pillaged them yet, huh? They're very official looking, so you did a good job. Um, any other trail? Um, just one. So David Tovey from Parks and Rec reached out to me. Um, they, they have a walking group, a Wednesday walking group. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Wednesdays. And I think uh, the 24th, I'm going to take them out to um, the McDonald property. Yeah, I, I have the date wrong. I don't know what date it is, but it's a. There is a date in May we'll, where we'll be going to the McDonald property. So that's good. It's a small group of. Um, of walkers, um, they're trying to kind of grow the grow the group, um, but I think we're going to do like a wildflower walk out into the on the twenty third out into White's Meadow and yep nice Tuesdays the twenty third. My daughter's class has been raising brook trout. Oh, that's great! In the school in Lincoln Street, and they're doing a release. At McDonald. That's awesome. When so, is that? Let me know. I'll be on my visit around. 
<laughs> I think they're pretty little, Don. Yeah, they're not very big yet. More than I'm catching now. Uh, I think it's tomorrow. Oh, cool. Tomorrow they did that afternoon. one year at Lincoln Street, didn't they? Was it Lincoln Street? They did that a couple of years ago. They've, yeah, I that's think, the yeah, same yeah. teacher. It's a really great idea, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Schmidt does it every year. Um, yeah. And she just got the, um, she's in fifth grade, so she got the, the tree from Peter. We have our, our spruce tree. That's great. Um, that we just got, so that. Yeah, so I think it's his 33, 33rd year presenting that to the fifth graders, which is fantastic. Um, we had representatives of the tree committee there. We had volunteers packing who, um, who we didn't, it was just volunteers who were friends of the tree committee. So that was great. Um, oh, wow. So the packing got done and uh, yeah, Peter gave his presentation. He had a huge, like, I don't know, three foot long big leaf magnolia that he brought for the kids to see. And they were just like fixated on that leaf. It was, it was crazy. They were like, can we get seeds for that? <laughs> but yeah. So that was the first time I've actually heard his presentation. Oh, you went. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, and other outreach events, there's a, the Earth Day video. Yeah, we, so this year, um, <coughs> Renee and I did the voiceover um, and, and shared three things from each of the committees. So that's been published, and it's on the electronic version of your agenda. It has the link on it, but it's on the Exeter TV um, site. Oh, I didn't catch that. That was the link. I'm, I'm going to watch that. Is that too? Bob did a great editing job. <laughs> Thank you guys for doing me. that. Yeah. I appreciate not having to record myself. That's <laughs> hard. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. I won't say I'm much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, what else? The orienteering event? That's in June. I guess that'll be before our next meeting. Right. Kyle, can you send that link out again that you had, I saw somewhere? Oh, the Upnor. On, on orienteering, because that sounds like an interesting event to me. Yeah, that's that's the one that, that we were talking about. They came, they were at the last meeting, and yeah, but you you sent some some link about uh, how to get involved in orienteering and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's what this is. They're, right. Oh, yeah, it's the up, Upnor is the name of the association, and they're hosting an event out of the circle. Oh, so it's going to be an educational event. Well, they'll they'll they can take people who have never. Well, maybe this is a good time to 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 advertise it. Um, super family friendly, like it's all different levels. I think the shortest one is maybe a mile and a half, and you show up. And if you don't have, if you haven't done it before, they'll give you a compass. They give you a very detailed map and a little um, finger digital thing that you then have to go and using the map and the compass find little caches that they've hidden around the forest. And then when you find them, you, you stick the finger thing into it to record that you've been there. And um, so th they'll be more than happy to show people, kind of get them set and how to do it. And then for some people, this is like super serious and it's like a, a 10 kilometer and it might go out through the tunnel to the other side and, and it's kind of like a race. And so it's everything in between. Um, but they're very excited to kind of teach people how to navigate just using, you know, the compass and no, no GPS. And, um, and they have this map, this amazing map. Yeah, and, and it's, I think it's like it would be $10 for a family um, is what the entry fee is. And so they're basically just trying to cover their own costs, and you just show up, and they'll explain everything to the people there. And you're gonna, you're, really, you're going to advertise it again like the week before? Yeah, we'll do that. And I've actually, when I'm out like on a bike ride in the woods and stuff, if I see families or hikers and everything, I, I always stop and, and yeah. do a little advertising there, That's too. Awesome. Um, uh, and I also posted on the, um, there's a bunch of White Mountain hiking pages, just about for people that want to learn how to navigate with a compass and a map. This is a great opportunity to practice. Um, and so June 4th. Yeah. And, and, and the group is upnor.org, up north orienteer, orienteering. But so. Yeah. All right, nice plug. And we don't have the trail race this year? No. Nope. Um, 
That, uh, they, it, that's a good question. I They're emailed coming, them. They are on the list to come to the next meeting. I emailed bothered. them and they said they aren't going to oh, have really? this year. Oh, really? Yeah. Sarah did re Huh. So my son was very excited to run in it, so. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's usually mid-June, so we would have to When it, was that? Did, do when it now. did he, she say they weren't doing it? I emailed and said, is the event happening this year? And they emailed back and said, no, it's been discontinued. Uh -huh. But that you didn't, that wasn't part of Kristen's communication. That was separate. Yeah. This was just me reaching out to Acidotic yeah. Racing yeah. from their contact. Okay. Well, that's too bad. I know that was a, that was a good race. Um... So it won't be on your agenda next month, then. It will not. <laughs> Check. Um, do we have any other committee reports? Um, the committees have been busy getting ready for the Ilway Festival. Uh, community power launch. I don't think we need to go into too many details yeah. but, um, on committee reports. Unless you want details. No, I... Um, we are doing, I am doing again the middle school um, water quality presentation. So I go out on the 17th for the first one and then um, the 22nd, I think it is, for their second presentation. And so that's students learning about what wetland buffers are, how they function, and then following up with um, actually physically testing. Like they develop a theory for which wetland is likely to have better quality water based on the size of the buffers around them and then they we have our VRAP meters our water quality meters that and then they test their theory so we're doing that again this year awesome and are we doing VRAP yeah okay do you need volunteers I do need volunteers VRAP starts in January uh, June I was gonna bring it up to the river study committee um, but anyone is available to help with me I haven't set any specific day or time or anything I'm completely flexible in terms of if, if I get a volunteer I'll do whatever they can do um, but yeah I'll come out I like coming out with you oh yeah day. okay are we still doing the same sites yes um, and then we also Brentwood expanded um, Eric Tur Tur yeah. Tur 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 um, he got a meter this year so he's getting the training on the 22nd um, and I can act as a liaison to VRAP for you guys if you ever need anything from Concord. Just good. That's good. I'm I'm happy to shuttle things Thank back you. and forth. I didn't ask you this year, but I probably should have. I just dropped it off because I had Eric's stuff too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should. Okay, great. Just, well, I'm, I'm good at delivering. Or if anyone needs samples delivered to the state lab, I can deliver things to Concord. It's cool that um, that Brentwood is on board, though, to have some additional sampling sites. Yeah. It'd be nice to get a snapshot of what that portion of the river looks like. Yeah, is that up on the, the hate, is it Hate Road or Height so Road? So I think or? his, I can't remember how many, I think he has three or four sites. I, hate, I don't hate. know exactly where they are. I know one is just, just above Pickpocket Dam. Okay. Um, and for people who oh. don't know the, what VRAP stands for, it's a Voluntary River Assessment Program. It's a statewide water quality assessment of rivers. There's a similar one for lakes and um, state-run volunteer. There's a state coordinator, but it's it's this amazing long-term volunteer monitoring program, and it looks we've been doing it for years and years. I think Exeter's one of the longer. I think we've been doing it in Exeter. We started it almost I'm going to say 25 years ago. We have about 20 to 25 years worth of data. Yeah. So it's it's an amazing yeah. resource. You know, you're looking at impacts of road salt, um, DO, yeah, other sort of general, very general water quality parameters. Mm -hmm. But that given this breadth of sampling, it's it's a neat data set uh, across the whole state. And all, not all, years. yeah, a lot of rivers. Um, well, again, it's not. I, I know it has sustainability. Um, maybe select woman Belanger knows. There was an article of citizens' petition on the ballot 
for the plastics, mm -hmm. which was passed. Has the select board made any decision as to how to move forward with that or not? Not at this time. Okay. So they had, the select board had requested, uh, the chair reached out to me, actually Dan shared it, Dan Chartrand's the select board rep on sustainability. They wanted SAC and myself to present a proposed approach for implementation, and so I submitted a draft to Russ to review, um, and it's going to be on the select board agenda on the 22nd, I think. May 22nd. She knows more than I do. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, Thank you. Unless any other committee reports, otherwise we have some minutes to to approve. Um, the minutes looked fine to me, other than there was that one issue I mentioned to you, Kristen, earlier about do we need to approve December, January? Um, For some no. reason it was in the minutes that, w that we had tabled the December and January. <coughs> We're all minutes. set. The ones that you have before you will catch us up. Okay. To February and April. So I guess I would, other than striking that, maybe we did. I guess this is confusing now. I'm confused. Does anyone have any other comments on the minutes? No? Okay. I, guess, I think we should remove that from the April minutes, the mention of the December and January yeah. tabling. I, don't, I think that was a copy and paste Yeah, well, issue. the non-public won't get approved until the next non-public session. So right. Weird, but. Okay. Otherwise, um, I'm good with them. I think you made one minor correct, highlighted one date issue. Um, as well. Yeah. I just need line numbers, so I know what you're talking about. You two know what you're talking about. Okay. The April minutes, mm -hmm. there's an incorrect date on line 131 that's highlighted in our packet. It says 222. 131, yeah. I think it should say 422. <coughs> Thank you. And then the approval of minutes is line 197 and 199. And I would motion that I don't believe we tabled those in our April meeting. So I don't think those should be included in the meeting minutes because okay. I don't believe that reflects what happened so I would move to strike those lines otherwise they look good to me and I would motion we approve both can we do it in one motion the February and the April minutes just separate them because especially with the amending of the April okay. well, all right I approve that we you do approve well, it's good. I motion that we approve the amended April minutes. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I'm gonna you should abstain because you weren't even there. And Dave, I don't think Dave's abstaining. So we have four to zero. Um, four to zero to two. To two. So regarding the February minutes, um, I will motion that we approve those as submitted. So moved. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Similarly, four to zero to two, those okay. pass. Um, any other business or correspondence? There's, you wrote on here the beekeepers. Oh, no, beekeeping. skip that. Skip that? Okay. The, I I just photocopied mine for you. Okay. Um, I did have something I wanted to share. It's kind of exciting. So um, for other business, if. Yeah. Um, so during COVID, I, the Ipswich, Massachusetts, their um, Ipswich River, um, Ipswich River Conservation Organization reached out to me and they wanted to hear about Exeter's dam removal project. 
And so I did a virtual presentation. They projected it in some bar somewhere in Ipswich. I don't, I don't know where, but I was there virtually. Um, and, and they had some great questions. And the reason they invited us is their dam situation is so similar to ours. It's in the heart of their downtown. There's, you know, a mill building that used to use it. Um, they, uh, they're, the city, it's kind of being moved forward, not by the select board, but more by the citizens. And so there's a lot of similarities. And so um, they invited me to go back down last weekend because um, the ballot measure is out for a vote tonight for them. Mm. And so I went on Saturday and spoke to a crowd of people down in Ipswich, Mass. And that was the first time I had actually <coughs> been to that site. And it was shocking to see how how, like it, it was kind of an echo of Exeter. It was a, it's a cute. Yeah, it's cute, a cute old town. Town, yeah. If this river is so threatened, um, so much water withdrawal from it that uh, sometimes parts of it in the early summer actually dry up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been noted many times in many different publications. You know how threatened that river is. Yeah, and for the first time, so that came up um, because. You know, there were people present who basically felt that, um, you know, why remove the dam if if that's not a major part of the problem? Um, but at the same time, the Ipswich River, um, I think it's the Watershed Association, I yeah. forget their exact title, but they... Um, they have been working through the legislature to pass regulation that brings all of the water users together and develops a plan moving forward. So that's in draft. So they're doing some incredible mm. stuff. Um, it was really cool. And they have some very fun outreach activities. Like they have a beavers and beer presentation where you learn about the importance of beavers in the local restaurant and just really fun paddles and some other stuff. So. Um, it was kind of it was kind of neat to see what another um, yeah, entity yeah. promoting um, water quality is doing. But anyway, it was exciting. So our story got to live on. Tomorrow. See how it went. What's that? Yeah, said, yeah, yeah. I just put it in my reminder. And now I'm curious to see how it works. Me so. too. And yeah. read the. I, I'm so issue. invested. <laughs> Good um, work getting yeah. out there. That's awesome. Yeah. It's and I know that our story can kind Durham of too has a dam, upcoming dam removal, and I think they're interested um, in Exeter. Well, they voted to move forward with their dam removal yeah. during last year. Right. Actually, they're studying it now how to go about doing it now. And yeah, we we hosted Durham back in 2016, 2017, a joint meeting to talk about the because uh, we had just gone through the dam removal vote yeah that's, we did that in what 2016 was it 2015 yeah okay and I know we met with the people from Durham the council uh, mm -hmm. the town administrator uh, Todd Zelig was here uh, we took a trip out to the dam mm -hmm. you know which is pre I think pre the dam pre coming down before it came down but we had already passed it so they were interested then in to what the process had been mm. so and we also presented our story to them um, virtually. Yes. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a cool case study we have. So. Awesome. And it's fun to talk about you know the the fish return too. You know it's it, it's just exciting to see, have footage of the alewives coming back in mass and. Um, Celtics. <laughs> Celtics. All right. So no, uh, I think that's it. Anything else? All right. I guess let's. I will motion to adjourn. Our next meeting is going to be June thirteenth. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Good night, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everyone. Thank Look at that. Eight.